Wild Man Jetty T, it's going down up in here. I got a legend on the phone right now. It's like, I don't know how this happens. It's like, legends just end up on the phone. And we got my man, T, Money Green in the building. Uh, what up, though? Now, we, live from freezing cold Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, we just left Detroit. That's why we had to get T, Money back on the phone. But, T, Money, we want to go ahead and let you introduce yourself and let the people know your discography. Man, this is take. It'll take the people two weeks to sit down and hear that. I mean, you, you ain't got to but give I'll them cut them. I'll cut yeah. them quick, right quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's a guy that's been putting it down on the bass for about 39 years with some of the greatest. The dramatic Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Shaquille O'Neal, Alita Adams, uh, Alita Adams, Robbie Robinson, Ice Cube, Warren G, The Dog Pound. I mean, some of everybody, man. I can just go on and on probably for about 15 minutes. Lord have mercy, boy. That's just... <laughs> so much... I got to get on some of that down south stuff, man. I know. That's what we got to work out. That's what's up, yeah. Now, now, you started with the Dramatics? Yeah, I started with the Dramatics when I was 17 years old. Okay. Ron Banks had to come by and ask my mama could I go on the road with him. And she said, well, you ain't doing nothing in school. You might as well go, so... And how long you been playing the bass? I've been playing the bass 39 years now, man. This is my 39th year. Wow. So, like, from the time that you started playing with the Dramatics, when did you start? Uh, I started playing bass actually in 1969. Okay. I got discovered with the Dramatics in 74. So it didn't take me long to kind of learn some stuff to be good enough to travel and be their musical director and stuff, you know? Now, that's incredible, man. Now, now, now when you talk about Snoop Doggy Dog, and the fabulous dramatics. <laughs> right. That's just what comes next, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so, I, you gotta. Because it is a doggy dog world for sure. You gotta tell me, how did you end up? I remember you told me the story before, but I like to give you, like, a, give us a brief, you know what I mean? Like, I know Colin Wolf was there, and then he left, and then in comes T. But in in comes T Green. That's right. Who, who uh, could really, you know, run the run strings around Colin Wolf, but <laughs> I met him and he was a nice guy. Nice guy. Uh, nice is, guy with, me, with me, I come with musicians and everything. I brought a lot of musicians from Detroit. And, you know, and, and George Clinton, I introduced George to Dre. He had never, uh, Dre, that was his idol. He had never met George. And George happened to be in the same studio we was at in, in another room. And Dre said, didn't you say you knew George? I was like, yeah, I know George. Luckily, I wasn't lying, and I went down there and got George and brought him in, and that was history how that happened with uh, him opening the uh, Snoop Dogg album up. Swing down with, to the yeah, jury oh, stop, he, no, he opened up with that, uh, me uh, the dog that can't swing up, the dog that can't pee on trees is a bitch. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, so, and then, uh, but what happened was, man, with the dramatic situation, I had quit the dramatics after being with him 20 years we were, we had just totally went down the drain everybody was just getting high more so than anything else and uh it was just time for me to go uh and when i just me and david ruffin jr we got in the car and broke out and headed west man and broke down in arizona for a couple days but we finally made it mm. and when we made it uh Man, I'm gonna tell you something. David Ruffin was coming over every day playing the Chronic before, you know, before we left to go to California. Right. And I used to say because I had been with the Dramatics so long, I was one of them old fools saying, "Man, would you cut that bullshit off, man? <laughs> I, you know, this rap stuff, man. I'm trying to get my head together. I done quit a group I was with for 20 years. And uh, man, as Lord would have it, he put us right in the midst of it. So I kind of was familiar with the music. And we met Warren, and he said, hey, call my brother, he needs space. And I called Dre for about a week, and then one day he just called us back, man, and told us to come down, and I played for him. He had nothing but a G thing playing. Mm. And I and I said, man, that's, he said, do you know that? I said, well, I heard this, I can learn it right quick. He said, no, I want to hear what you was doing, what you would do, because he had it playing without the bass. Right. And I played about 200 bass lines right quick, so he knew I was the man for the job. Just like but, that. Yeah, but Snoop was coming over every day playing the dramatics, man. Every day. I was like, man, I don't even want to tell these guys that I was with these old fools because I don't want them to think I'm an old fool. Right. But, but he pulled up one day because he with the dramatics, the Lord blessed me to be able to write several songs for them. And he pulled up one day playing one of my songs, telling me I don't know nothing. He don't know nothing about this, T. Green. And I said, hold on, Snoop, let me see the CD. 
what song is it? He said track nine. I had him look at track nine and read the credits. That was his first time reading credits. And he said, this is UT Green? I said, yeah. He said, you could call LJ Reynolds right now. And I called LJ. And uh, he put LJ to the test to see if it was really LJ. And then he was like, man, I want, I'm like, I'm going to get y'all on my album. And the rest was history, man. And that was the biggest. After being down and out with the dramatic, that, that turned out to be the biggest thing for them. They put another 15 years back on their album. Um, it's a crazy mixed up world. Yeah, they it's went on back out for 15 more years. Yes, sir. It's a doggy dog ride. <laughs> so we had a ball with that too, man. Now I remember um, you you did you, you one of the bass um, on Dre's record too. What, what, what record did you do with Dre? Well, I did the uh, on Dre thing because I had came when I came. The chronic was done already, but uh, it was great that I was able to do the Let Me Ride remix. Mm, that's what it was. And that was when George said, "Woo, woo, 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 woo." woo. And uh, Dre gave me a shout out on that record too at the end. He was like, I got my nigga D Green on the bass. And I just knew, man, I took that. I knew everybody back in the D was going to be on the East like when I got that. back. Like that. <laughs> I remember when we first met you, um, Snoop was with Master P. Right. And he came to town and he came to the studio and I had met you that day. You know, okay, and, yeah. And that was like cool to actually see, you know, the relationship that you had with Snoop and, you know, you know, you always being in Detroit, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. Snoop got a lot of roots, you know, from Detroit, from Mississippi to California. So, you know, it just shows you how, you know, people pass, you know what I mean? They can hey, pass. I tell you what's really, really funny, man, is one day Snoop came up to me and said, gee, man, you know what? You really cool now, man, because you know my daddy. And I was like, your daddy, and what happened, his daddy was my mailman for like 10 years, man. Wow. And uh, his daddy would always tell me, oh, look like you got a royalty check coming yeah, right here, T. And I was like, oh, shit. So when I finally made it out there, one day Snoop let me know I was cool. You know, that, that, who was daddy? I said, oh, for hell, that's my man. And he said, yeah, that's my dad. So that was just really nice how that's working. Come in the 